Hey everyone, Alex Roy here, your trusted realtor in Portland, Oregon. It is early January and so it is a perfect time to take a look back at 2023, find out what happened in the Portland area real estate market during that year and that will help us understand what we can expect in 2024. So without further ado, let's dive in. Very first thing that happened in 2023, home prices stabilized. Like check this graph out. You can see a comparison here between 2022 and 2023. And as you'll notice, 2022 was characterized by a big rush before the interest rate spiked and then a pretty dramatic drop in home sale prices. The average sale price fell in that second half of the year. But all through 2023, it really leveled off and stabilized. It hit a low there in January, went through a little bit of a seasonal trend, and then the diminish in the average sales price, which is typical every year, was very level and steady. So much so that November and December of 2023 outperformed the previous year. Now on the whole, when all taken into account, the entire Portland metro area for the entire year, the average home sales price dropped compared to 2022, but really that's just because 2022 had such an offset because of that big rush in the first half of the year. The second thing that happened was that interest rates increased throughout the year to a point where they were over 7.5% by the third quarter. And that really put a damper on buyer activity. We can see this here in this chart where pending home sales were way down compared to the previous year of 2022. And as we look at this chart here showing the pending sales of 2022 compared to 2023, the good news is that after those interest rates dropped, down from seven and a half percent down to the upper sixes that really started to generate buyer activity and we actually finished the year better than December of 2022. But that reduced buyer activity uh, in that third quarter of the year right up until November really created a lot more inventory on the market that was sitting around increasing our days on market time. And that's another thing that happened uh, due to the high interest rates uh, is that Homes are just sticking around a lot longer. And that brings us to our third point of what happened this year, and that is that buyers became more selective as they saw that homes are sitting around on the market more, and because they know they're gonna be paying more in their interest rate, they became a lot more choosy in what they were selecting. And so buyers no longer had that fear of missing out, fear of missing out on the multiple offer situation first weekend, trying to get that one house at three and a half percent, three percent. Now, since the homes are sticking around longer, buyers felt they have more negotiating power. And so that was another major thing that characterized the year. A lot more cases of sales where the buyers had negotiated the seller to either pay for an interest rate buy down or to pay for uh, closing costs for the buyer or in some cases, both, both an interest rate buy down and closing costs for that buyer. And so that's kind of an important thing for sellers out there to remember. Not every home sale that you saw in this past year is exactly like it seems uh, just based on the sold price. For example, let's say one of your neighbor's houses down the street was listed at 400,000 and then it ended up selling at 410,000. That doesn't necessarily mean that there was a bidding war, there are multiple offers and for that buyer to win, they had to bid it up $10,000. What could also be the case and was much more likely last year was that the buyer made an offer to say, hey, I will give you 410,000 in purchase price, but I want 10,000 back in seller credit to cover my closing costs. And in the end, the seller was getting pretty much what they were asking for, offering the house for 400,000 after that seller credit netting 400,000. So what does this mean for 2024? Well, the forecast is more of the same. We're gonna have our annual real estate cycle throughout the year, but with fewer homes for sale. And a big reason we're gonna have this inventory shortage is because we've got two converging factors. First, we've already talked about how the interest rates are higher than they were in years past. And with those buyers not coming onto the market because the interest rates are higher, they were losing out on inventory that we would otherwise have because 70% of buyers out there have a home that they need to sell in order to make that purchase. And then the other factor is that we've got buyers who are currently sitting in a home where their mortgage is under 4%. 
So they have very little motivation to get out of that house and purchase another house that's going to be at a much higher interest rate. So for those that are under 4%, not as much motivation to make that move. And all of that coming together is creating a little bit of an inventory shortage. And so the second thing you're going to see in this coming year are more of the typical ebbs and flows of the annual housing cycle. Here you can see in this chart, it's broken into six basic sections. You've got the New Year's kickoff where you've got a bunch of inventory left over from last year. Not a lot of homes coming onto the market at that time, but if buyers are out, they can find some good deals. Then you've got the spring market and the pre-summer market. This is when most homes are coming onto the market because it's a great time to list. Homes look great with the green grass, their yard is good, good lighting, get the home on the market that time, and that's where we build up the majority of our inventory for the year. Then we move to summer, bit of the doldrums of summer. Homes are coming on the market at that time, second best time for homes to be coming on the market, but buyer activity tends to cool a little bit right around 4th of July because people are off for vacation, kids are out of school, they're thinking about other things than purchasing a home. So we get the inventory really starting to build by that point. Fall is a little bit more balanced. Homes are coming onto the market and buyers are active. And then as we move into the winter months, the uh, number of homes that are coming onto the market drops off, but usually we've built up a pretty good inventory of homes at that time. And as buyers uh, are out in the market in October, November, December, they're kind of cleaning up the bulk of that inventory. But that is the time when we see the most inventory sitting around out there in the market. And the final prediction for 2024 is that people are going to move for kind of the same reasons that they did last year. It's pretty much only if they've got significant life events, that's the major motivator for people moving. So things like change of job, you know, uh, making it necessary that you need to relocate, whether it's to a different part of the city or you're working at home now and you really need that extra home office, something like that, or, you know, moving out of Portland, moving into Portland. Uh, the other group is, you know, changes in household formation. So getting married, getting divorced, somebody passing away, uh, kids leaving for college, and now empty nesters need to downsize. Those are gonna be some really common reasons for people to need to sell the home and purchase another one. And then there's the group of home sellers that have a whole bunch of equity in their home, like retirees, where maybe they don't have a mortgage at all, so they're able to sell their home and use all of the proceeds for the sale to purchase a new home downsizing. These folks don't care about what the interest rates are because they're buying all cash. So the final question is, where are interest rates gonna end up uh, this year? No one can predict for sure, but economists figure it's gonna be somewhere between the low 6% and the low 7%. Now, if it ends up that we spend most of the year in the low sevens, like above 7%, that's really gonna lock up our industry again. A lot less home buyers out there. We might even see price home prices fall further. If it's in the uh, mid sixes, kind of where it's at right now in early January, we're gonna have this kind of balanced market. I don't think home prices are gonna go up or down. It's gonna be pretty steady and it'll be a nice time for both buyers and sellers. Sellers, there's a bit of predictability. Buyers, you definitely have time to shop for a home, look around and still have a decent interest rate when purchasing. And then finally, if you do end up in the low sixes, we might even see a little bit of a push in the home industry uh, with a lot more buyer activity out there, maybe even some home prices rising if it does hang around all, for a while in the low sixes. So whether you're looking to sell a home, buy a home, or do both, you wanna be ready day one. The best way to make that happen, get in touch with me. Give me a call, send me an email, shoot me a text. Let's find a time to get together, set, sit down, and start doing some game planning for 2024. Never too early to start. Great way to get success is to plan early and then execute that plan. And that's what I'm here to help you do. I'm Alex Roy in Portland, Oregon, working hard for your success.